Hi there, today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to make uh, a player that is for games like Asteroid where it's a top-down view and there's no gravity like in a platformer. So uh, let's get started here. Uh, in this game, uh, I'm going to make uh, a player that's uh, very similar to this ship prefab, which uh, I can show you really quickly. Uh, lots of stuff in there. I'm going to show you how to build all these pieces, but let's do a quick test to uh, show you what I'm talking about with this kind of player. Uh, by default, what's going to happen is he's going to just fall down as if he was in a platformer, and he's not going to work very well. So what we're going to do is uh, adjust our game properties, and if you click on this uh, select tool, uh, you'll see, if nothing is selected, you'll see uh, uh, these uh, buttons here. The first one being play field, where you can change the physics property of the pr physics properties of the world uh, that you're going to be building your game in. Uh, We've got uh, the top here, we've got Playfield Size and View, where you can create a normal size game. A double size game, where there's actually twice as much space and everything is shrunk down uh, in your view, uh, your game view, uh, to uh, half the size. And then a zoomed view, uh, where you can actually have a camera, sort of a camera kind of thing, following you around as you, as you play. Uh, and uh, what that does is basically takes whatever you're controlling and follows it. Uh, and then down here on the second uh, uh, section is the uh, playfield physics. And there's only two selections here. Uh, the first one is gravity. Uh, everything pulls everything down towards the bottom of the screen. And uh, motion resistance, which uh, slows everything down. And I'll show you what that does. Uh, basically, that's good for uh, top-down games because it'll slow everything down and have it, uh, instead of uh, seeming as though it was floating in the air, it would seem the, as though it was uh, riding on the ground things would slow down as they move. So let's turn that, let's turn gravity off and then motion resistance on. Uh, the final section here, uh, which I'm not going to really use uh, at this point, is uh, you can set up your play field boundaries. You can enclose it uh, so that nothing can go outside of the area. You can use ground only, which basically puts uh, a, a box that you can't see down at the bottom so that when things go downward, they stop. Um, but if they were to go side to side, they'd fall off the play field. And then, oh, a completely open, which would be uh, everything just falls outside the play field. Uh, so let's uh, stick with enclosed, and uh, we've turned off gravity and motion resistance. And uh, now let's quickly test, and we'll see that now we have um, a player that can move in two dimensions as though we were looking down on it. And uh, if we hit space bar, we can also fire some projectiles. Okay. Let's get rid of this. And let's start by drawing a shape. We're going to create this ship or something similar uh, from scratch. So let's uh, start by drawing a shape and we're going to use the uh, polygon tool, which is slightly different from the others, uh, in that you can just sketch a shape and it'll create it. So let's create a shape here. And uh, it's a sketchy shape. Uh, we can sort of tweak by double clicking. You can erase vertices and you can drag them around and I don't want to be too picky here let's make it a little smaller you can create a simple spaceship shape and I'm just double clicking if you double click on an edge you can create a new vertex and if you double click on the vertex you can uh, erase it so uh, this will be my ship shape and uh, next, and or let's quick do a quick test here, and he just sits there because there's no gravity to pull him down, so he's just going to sit there. Now, uh, in order to make him really a player, we're going to have to uh, add some controls. So I'm going to add a simple controls here. Uh, first, we're going to add um, a rotator. And uh, let's see what that does. And I'm hitting the right and left arrows, as you can see, and he's rotating right and left. And uh, the next step is we want him to be able to sort of have a thrust to him. And uh, we can simply add, down here we can add a thruster. And, uh, or we can use a mover. And the mover uh, basically allows you to move uh, back and forth. And in the case that there's no gravity, depending on the uh, direction you face, it's going to move back and forth in that direction. So it's not necessarily up and down, it's back and forth 
uh, oriented to the orientation of the player. You can also add instead, if you want to just have him go forward, you can add a thruster and uh, we'll assign that. Right now it's assigned a letter to letter Z and you can only assign the thruster to letters. You can't assign it to arrows. So uh, let's, let's see what happens here. Now we have a thruster and that's a little different in that you can uh, you can actually offset the uh, point where the thrust occurs. And now if I hit Z, he kind of turns a little because his thruster is off center. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, let's stick with the mover for now. And now we have basically the ability to move around in two dimensions. So you can see how uh, this creator is not only good for uh, creating platformer games and things with gravity, but you can create top-down games. Uh, prototype games that way. Um, next step is we're going to add uh, the ability to fire projectiles. Uh, that's real easy. All you got to do is click, uh, choose what your projectile shape is going to be, and let's create it way off here, and we'll move it later. And we'll just create a simple small projectile. And uh, the next step is to actually make it so that uh, you can, it will follow the uh, follow the the player around and actually be part of the player. Uh, right now it's separate completely separated and it's just free flowing uh, free moving object what we're going to do is we're going to now it's a little tricky but uh, I'm going to show you this widget called the connect basically it lets you connect two objects you're going to first select the the parent object and then a child object so parent child relationship and then you drag this onto the parent uh, and the child will follow it around and now we have now once that happens this uh, object actually no longer has any uh, collisions to it. Basically, it won't collide with anything. Uh, not very useful, but uh, in the case of actually creating uh, physical shapes that will uh, respond to the world around it physically, but you can add things like um, an adder, which will create a copy of that object, which then can be part of the uh, simulation physically. And what I'm doing is I'm adding this adder uh, which will respond to uh, spacebar by default. You can also choose mouse click. Um, and this has the same properties as spawner. And I drag this arrow in the direction that I want the object to be launched. Uh, and the longer I make the arrow, the faster it will go when it is launched. So let's uh, go ahead and test this now. Now I have my object. And you can see that it's uh, transparent now because it's not really in the game until I click my hit my spacebar. And now I've created copies, and I can create as many copies as I want. And uh, by default, they will expire. You can see them expiring uh, in 10 seconds. And the reason for that is that you, you don't want to create billions of copies of objects and have your game slow down uh, with projectiles. So you eventually want those projectiles to go away. You can also uh, select your projectile. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, select the uh, modifier for adder and you can have it explode when it expires. Let's reduce the uh, time that it lives to three seconds and see what that does. And we'll see that in three seconds, boom, they explode. And you can see that when they do explode, they send uh, the things that are around them sort of flying off. So there you go. That's, uh, that's basically how to create a top-down player. And you can actually, uh, when those things explode, you could have them damage things, crush things. Um, you could also add a sensor to your projectile and have it uh, trigger sensors when it touches things. Um, but that's it. Uh, I hope you like it, and I uh, hope to see some more uh, top-down games showing up. Thanks.